Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm back with another of our journal series. Now in this one I wanted to share with you my most useful journal make, most useful notebook, whatever you wish to call it, and I do genuinely, genuinely, genuinely use these all the time, and I make my own, and I, buy, I used to buy them, but I make them my own, and I will show you what I mean. So... I'm talking traveller's notebooks. I use them. I also use them in my work in that this is where I store all my design ideas and stuff that I'm working on. I also run my life on a planner where I use them all the time as well. So as you can see, I do genuinely love these and I use them and they're the most useful thing and I think truly versatile and I wanted to share this with you because maybe this is a really good entrance level now I mean you can buy these these are Dine Reevely I believe these are part of the dialogue system that she uses um, I make my own now and I make them with my jelly plate prints although we're going to be using some cardstock to do it and if you stay watching to the very end, I'll show you a couple of tricks and tips about how to get them really, really inexpensively and maybe use more useful supplies. So let's put these to one side and I just want to talk you through a few things. Let's, um, let's keep this one out, shall we? Okay. Um, the Traveller's Notebook is part of like the Midori system or the Traveller's Note system. Uh, traveler's notebook system this is a standard sized traveler's notebook they come in everything from small passport ones up to wider ones into taller and i'm not going to go into it because i'm not the world's authority on it what i would say is if you go onto the internet and put um say traveler's notebook sizes or midori notebook sizes it will show you a complete different range now the cover I've got here, I want to say this is the Car Hill size, which is C-A-H-I-L-L, -L, um, because I bought that size because you can see I've stacked at least one, two, three, four, five in there. One, two, three, four in there with an insert and a writing board, and I keep myself... So I wanted a larger one before I actually committed to um, buying one. I actually did make myself a cover. Um, this was my very first one I made just believe it or not this used to be a sofa um, when we got rid of the sofa I cut all the leather off and I actually made myself um, one of these now the way it works is usually inside you'll have three bands sometimes you can have more and the whole method is you make the book let's find the middle of the booklet and then the booklet just slides in and that's how the book stays in there, which means you have one cover and you can replace, add, you can put different pockets in here, different stuff. So this was my very first one. I haven't got rid of it because sometimes I do still use it when I'm traveling and I would have put a special selection of these in maybe um, my planner for the next six months and maybe a notebook, maybe a design book. I want to put notes and ideas in maybe a small sketchbook. I generally use these a lot. So... Well, I think that's a total promo of that done. So let's talk about what a standard size measurement is. And I'm only talking standard size here. So the measurement from here to here, if you want a standard size, is 4.33 inches, which is 110 millimeters. The height here is eight and a quarter inches or 210 millimeters tall. Now, Luckily enough, the paper here in the UK is actually eight and a quarter inches. So I know that all I need to do is fold it in half. Although there are times you may have to trim your papers down. I don't worry if the papers in it are slightly smaller. Say I'm not doing one of my planners. Maybe I'm doing some of the travel. I'll put smaller pieces in as well. So just remember um, the standard width is 4.33 inches. Standard height is 8.25 or eight and a quarter inches. However, if you're going in millimeters, the measurement there is 110 millimeters and the height is 210 millimeters. Now, um, I do it ever so, ever so, ever so slightly differently because when you actually open this up, when you make a cover, obviously this would be um, 
what is it? Where have I written it down? This would be 200 and I can't, I can't even think. What am I up to? Sorry, I don't usually do this in measurements like that. There you go, it is. It's 220 wide. Okay, obviously 110 times 2 or 4.33 times 2 because you'd need the cover. So hopefully I've not confused anyone there. So you've got, this is the front cover, 110 millimeters or 4.33, 8.25 inches tall or 210 tall. But if you open it up to create the cover, this would be twice the 110, which is 220. Hopefully that's as clear as mud. I do tend to get a bit confused with numbers myself anyway. However, when I'm making my journal, uh, my traveler's notebook covers, I don't do um, the 4.33 because I can never divide four, um, multiply that by two and then divide it in half. I make my measurement nine inches and I'll show you why. Okay, um, if this was supposed to be 4.33, which that is, that's fine. However, if you take into consideration going around the corner and you take into consideration all of the other pages I put in, now it's only one notch short of nine. Yeah, it is one short notch of nine. So basically, I do my covers nine inches by eight and a quarter inches. And don't ask me for that. Oh, can I do it in millimeters? Um, that would be 228 millimeters by 210 millimeters. Hopefully that's okay. But so I do nine by eight and a quarter is what I'm trying to get at. So that's what I'm going to be doing and it fits perfectly in. I like it nine inches tall because when I use my scoreboard, I can obviously score at four and a half. That reminds me I haven't got my scoreboard. You know, you can be as prepared as you like and then you always forget one thing. So we're actually going to now start working. I'm going to show you how to do these. These are really simple. I'm going to show you, um, a different version of the three whole pamphlet stitch, different than when we did in the very first journal we did, which I think was a cereal box journal. I just want to go through all of the different elements. Okay, what am I using for covers? Okay, this is one of my jelly plate prints. It's on a heavy card stock. That to me is heavy enough. I can't remember what GSM it is. I want to say it's about 240 GSM. So that's a heavy enough one for me. Um, if I wanted to do it differently, I could make it more robust by taking another one and putting two of them back to back. I would then glue them together and we're going to do that anyway with a thinner card later. So, okay, so that's a 12 by 12 jelly plate print that I would use. Or you can actually bring in um, just regular 12 by 12s from your craft pads. These are going to be a lot thinner. I would definitely do recommend sticking two back to back. Um, it's not very often you're going to have these without a cover and if you do it's a notebook I don't get hung up on that and again here's another another pad and this one is also thin but this is one-sided if it's one-sided I normally do put them out to back so I'm going to work with these two I think um, just because I can so first thing I need to do is I need to see whether there's something on here I actually want as a cover now if you look at this, this section here is where the cover is going to be, okay? And this section here is where the cover is going to be. So I'm going to cut these down to eight and a quarter high. Excuse my guillotine, I'm not a trimmer person. Well, I, I am, but I don't get on very well with trimmers. So first of all, I'm going to deal with the height. I know the height is eight and a quarter. So I'm going to come into eight and a quarter on my trimmer. Now, if I cut here, I'm gonna cut that off. So I need to turn this around. It's just always double, double, double check what direction things are gonna be in. So I'm just gonna cut that off. That just becomes a spare bit of craft card. I could use it for pockets if I wanted with something else. So I now have my piece here. Now this is the one I wanna keep. So this time I want to go by nine inches. So I'll line that up with nine inches, slice that down again, pocket tag tuck, whatever it needs to be. So this is my cover. So once that's folded in half, I have, this is my front cover. Now I'm gonna come in on the other one and I'm going to have a look at this. I think I wanna take this down to eight and a quarter. 
pan I'm going to cut this down this way because I quite like that element and I can cut this down to nine so I'm doing inches guys because I really don't use um, millimeters very often which is why I struggle with them so put that on the floor so I have my two pieces now they should be exactly the same size and they are exactly the same size so that's either going to be my inside or outside, or that's going to be my inside or outside. Look into this. I actually quite like this as my outside. So now what I want to do is, now there are umpteen different ways of making this, remember people, that people, who am I talking to you guys? Um, this is just the way I make them. So please look around and see if anyone else makes them differently that you like the look of. So I'm going to come in, I've got my scoreboard, I'm going to put this down. Now this is my outside, so I'm going to score a four and a half inch mark down the center. Now I want to make sure I've got that the right way around. I've actually scored a line in, which means when I fold it, it's going to become a peak. So remember I normally say valleys become peaks. Now this is my inside cover, so as I'm going to fold it this way, I need to put it this way on. And I'm going to do four and a half and I'm going to fold it this way. Now there's a reason I like to fold them before I glue them and that being it just makes it a lot easier. I should leave that up. I might need that. It makes it a lot easier when I glue if they're already folded. Personal view. I know a lot of people will actually um, glue them and then fold them. I've just found this gives me the better option. Thing is, you will always have a little tiny area there to trim off. I do trim it off, but I trim it off later and I'll trim it off with a craft knife. So I'm going to come in. Let's get a bit of a sticky mat on the go. So I've got something I glue onto and I'm going to just glue this into place. Now I'm just using a glue stick. Um, I've always just used a glue stick. I have never really had any problems um, with the glue stick holding. You have to keep reminding yourself this is a notebook. This is something I'm going to use maybe just for capturing moments, maybe just for making notes. I mean I do generally keep one of these in my car. There's one of them in my work box. There's one of them in my um, messenger bag that I go to meetings with just because I don't have the best memory in the world but I have a great imagination and if I don't write stuff down it's gone. I can assure you my brain will move on to the next thing. So come in, give this another glue. Now, if you are someone who's got a sewing machine, after you've glued this, you could go around and sew around the edges if that was sort of style you wanted. Okay, sorry about the knocking or the tapping. That just happens to be part and parcel of what this is. Let's put the glue stick by. My fingers just a little bit of a wipe our damp cloth. So I'm going to come in. Let's take that out of the way. It doesn't need to be here anymore. Make sure this is the right way up. Make sure that's the right way up. I tend to put it into the fold. And I like to slide it to make sure it matches all the way along. It has give it a bit of a burnish. You could use a credit card for this if you wanted to smooth it out. I know it's not everyone's way of doing it. But that gives me my first stage. So that's made it, in my opinion, robust, about, robust enough for day-to-day -day use. Now, if you want something that's going to be a lot more durable, say you are using it as a traveller's notebook and you are going to be travelling, then you could always at this stage... Oh, sorry about that. You could always come in at this stage and give the entire thing a coating, a Mod Podge, or seal it in some way. Just making a whole heck of noise there. So, okay, so we've done this bit. Now, what I want to do is, as you can see, there is a real thin bit where the thickness of the cover has just pushed that out a little bit. That's expected. You will always have that because you've got one thickness of card on the inside of the other one. So I'm going to pull in. Where's that cutting mat gone? Right. I'm going to pull in a cutting mat. Now, you could do this with your trimmer or your... Um, Guillotine. I'm a bit old school. I, I'm a chef and a baker and a confectioner. Knives don't really scare me. So I tend to use a craft knife a lot. So I've lined this metal edge up against the edge of my cover. I've got a new blade. 
I like to use a new blade for this. I'm just going to come down and run that down there just to tidy it up. At this point I also look around the other edges and see if there's any other edges I really want to tidy down. Like that one is probably needs just a little sliver taken off. Now, um, this stage is unnecessary. This is just me being really picky about having things absolutely perfect. So, so there you go. So I've now done that. That's all nice and ready to go. And we can move on to the next stage. Now, well, this is drying. I mean, I'm not going to try and work on it too wet, but I mean, well, that's drying. I'm going to put that to one side and we're going to talk about papers. Now, for me, for this one, I'm just going to use a selection of papers. You can use any paper you wish in this. Depends on what you want. You could be making a little notebook, say you're some new sketches. You could make this out of art paper. You could, I mean, this is copy paper. This is just graph paper and this is just cream colored paper. So I'm just going to mix these up a bit within the journal itself. Um, these are British size paper, which as you can see is exactly eight and a quarter. If you find you're in a different country and you've got a different size standard paper, you might want to trim your paper down so it fits within that dimension. I'm being a bit picky about this dimension because if you buy um, a cover, the cover is going to be built for eight and a quarter high because that's the standard size. So all I do here, I think I've got about 20 pages here. I'm just going to fold these in half. Now, we know that these are going to be too wide, definitely going to be too wide. Um, I tend to use this method because I use the little notebook. I make little notebooks out of the bits I cut off at the end. However, you could cut these down to start with and then fold them into the right width. Completely up to you guys, Complete, completely up to you. So as I said, I know that these need to be nine inches wide. I'm not worried about that because with the Traveller's Notebooks, the edges of the pages, so I'll pull one in again, the edges of the pages are flush to the edges of the cover. So I trim mine afterwards. I, I don't I don't bother with trying to make it right in the first place. Um, this graph paper is slightly shorter in height than the not, uh, than the eight and a quarter tall, but it doesn't bother me as I said because if it's shorter, it's just shorter. Not a worry to me at all. So um, also when you're doing something like folding signatures, don't take a whole wad of paper and just fold it in half. Um, do it in maybe one or two sheets at a time because that way you'll have all of the edges will be even with each other and um, they will have a bit of I don't know what the word is when you actually fold numerous pages together you will find that they creep so I'll look when I put the signature together I'll show you you'll see you'll see what I mean the middle pages will protrude more than the outer pages and that's just because you've got all of the thickness of paper to go through so let's just put this last one in. So there you go. So right, so I've got cream ones, I've got white ones. I had graph paper somewhere, and I've got graph paper there. So I'm just going to mix this up a bit. I'm not not worried that it's absolutely perfectly anything. So how many is in there? Why are you stuck together? I've not glued you. So I having a bit of a gluey moment. There you go. So let's put two of those. One of those. That's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. I'm having trouble picking things up today. That's twelve. That makes twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. 16, 17, 18, and those make 20. 
Oops, that one folded over on me. So in this one I'm doing 20, and I've done 20 because these are actually um, quite thin pages. If you're doing it as a drawing book and you're using drawing paper or maybe watercolour paper, you're going to find it's thicker. I would normally do maybe about 15 pages. When I do one for my... When I make them for my planner, I make them out of slightly more robust um, paper because, as you can see, I use them as a glue book as well, just for inspirational stuff. And I only put 12 pages in these, so it depends on how much you want to put in. Now, if I tap all that down, see here, this is what I mean about the pages creep. So the inner pages will stick further out and the outer pages will be further back. So, And that's purely the nature of... Um, putting folded papers into each other. Now I put a random selection of papers in here. As I said, the graph paper is just ever so slightly short. Not going to worry me, not going to be a panic. This could be anything. You could even use recycled brochures and papers and maps, whatever you want to use this for. So don't get stuck up on it, it has to be a notebook. When it comes to lined paper, it is quite tricky to find lined paper that actually has lines going in the right direction. So what I would say is, Go, go out when you go to um, the back to school stores and you'll find sales. You'll find notebooks like these for school books. Perfect. Just take the staples out and then you've got all of these that have got lines on them. You can just cut them down and put them in there if you want line pages. I would, however, if you can find them without the margin in, that's fine. Because once you've cut this off, you'll have this margin here. But your page will end there. It's something to consider. We'll talk further about um, ways of doing stuff later on when I actually find a piece I want to work with. So, right, we've got that and we've got our cover. So, make sure the cover's not stuck. So I'm going to put my signature into my cover. Okay, now I'm going to use clips. You've seen me use them before. I use these little clamps. You can use bulldog clips. Anything to secure um, the pages in place while you're working. So I need to find the middle. Now I want to make sure that's really pushed up against the spine and clip it. I flip it around the other way, push that one back in, clip it, and then I do the same on the other side. Clip it, Just pop those down so they don't get in the way. Push that right into, the, the tighter you can get it into the spine, the better. It'll make your sewing a lot easier. It'll make the hole punching a lot easier. So I've got that all in place. I don't mind that it's slightly rippled. I know that that's due to the way that I've actually clipped this really tightly into place. But once I've sewn this in, it'll all even see. It's buckling there because of the tightness of this clip. If I do, if I do this, there you go, that bobble's gone. So it's just, just the way it is, nature of it, so don't get panicky about that. So now we need to sew these signatures in. And you've seen I've got a little sewing kit. You can pick up um, one of these kits on the internet really quite inexpensively. Let's do it in white, I think. Um, I know that Gail Augustinelli on her website, uh, if you go to Gail's Favourite Things, you will see she's got a link to Amazon where she's actually got... Um, a sewing kit she uses. If you just look at waxed thread, um, and I use a darning needle, you could actually do this with um, embroidery flosses if you want. I wouldn't use sewing cotton, however, because it's not strong enough. So I'm going to put my book at an angle. I've got this to punch through into. So I'm going to come in directly in the middle. We're going to do a version of a three-hole pamphlet stitch. So punch my hole through, I come down from the top, maybe just a little bit, probably about a centimetre, um, just under half an inch. Um, but I don't, I don't get worried about the measurements. I also come in from the other side just to make sure that the holes have gone all the way through. So there you go, so I've done that bit. So this bit's done. This is an awl, that's A-W-L, is for making the holes. You can use something else if you've got something else to make holes. That's not a problem. Now, because I know my traveller's notebooks go through quite a bit of use, I don't do a single thread. I do more than that. So I go one, two, three, four, and I do a little bit of a safety net, which is about half one. So, because I sew with a double thread, so let's put that out of the way. Let's thread my needle. 
Let's hope I can see. I can see, it's just not going through the hole. There you go. Nothing like putting yourself under the pressure of actually doing this on camera, right? Now, if you were to go back and look at um, the cereal box journal we did, our method for sewing was we went out through the middle hole, we came back in through the bottom hole. We went back out through the middle hole, we went in through the top hole, brought it down and tied it off. There is another version of a three pamphlet stitch that you can do where you go out through the middle hole, come down to the bottom and go in, and then you go all the way to the top, go out, come back in here, and then where the thread is down the middle, you have a piece either side and tie it off. I like doing that on these, but I don't go from the inside, I go from the outside because there's going to be that cotton, um, that elastic down the inside of the cover to hold this into my um, cover. So I like to have the knot of my work on the outside. So this is another version of a three hole pamphlet stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the middle one, come through, there you go. I'm going to come back in through the top hole, back out through the top hole, should I say. Now, whenever you're going back in through a hole that you've actually got anything, make sure that you pull the thread to one side. So that's going to be relevant when you actually come back in, which we'll do from the inside. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'll try to do it upside down for the camera. That's not working, is it? So there you go. And now here's where, give this a real nice pull so that the thread isn't going to be through here. You want to come through without splitting your original thread. Okay, so now both my strings are on the same side. I want the strings or the ends to be either side of that central line. Okay, then I come in and I'm going to give this a nice tight knot and another tight knot and then I just cut them off. So because that's then going to be up against the spine of my cover, which I'll show you in a moment, um, and it'll be out of harm's way then. I'm not going to have the knot getting my way of working. So just to reiterate that, I've got my thread on my needle. I went through the middle. I then came out through the top. I went all the way to the bottom and went back in, all the way to the centre. I held the thread out the way came out through the center hole, put the threads on either side of the middle one, tied them off twice. You could do a bow, you could leave that there for any reason you want. And that's how I do it. If I wanted to do it from the inside, I know this is a little labor intensive, I just wanna make sure we're all totally clear. If you wanted to do the same one, but end on the inside, I would go through the inside to the out. I would come in through the bottom, Take this thread all the way up to here, go back out, come back in, and then tie them off on the inside. I will maybe try and do that in one of my future videos so you can see that, that kind of thread the other way around. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to show you. Let's pull that cover in I made. So, the reason I like the knot to be on the outside is because if this is threaded through one of the elastics, which it eventually will be, as you can see, it doesn't get stuck in there. I don't mind the knot is on the outside. It's never going to bother me. Right, so we've got this sewn in. Let's put that to one side. Now we need to do some trimming at this point. Now, luckily here in the UK, as I said, my paper is the right height. If your paper was too high, I'd come in with a craft knife and cut that off. However, I've got to cut this down to size. Let's get that cutting mat. Now, the reason I like to do this way is purely because then I know everything is going to end up flush. If I cut my papers the right size to start with, the edge of my book would look like this with all of these pieces sticking out various sizes. So this is the reason I like to do it this way. So again, I'm going to bring my metal ruler in or metal straight edge or whatever you're using. Just line that up. And then I don't try and push too hard. I just literally run my blade down several times until I get all the way through to the mat below. Um, 
you'll get a better result if you don't try and do it quickly because if you try and force your blade down you're really likely to go off at an angle there you go i've done it now this gives me a really flush edge to my notebook my notebook is almost finished do you want to talk about the bits we've cut off okay the bits we've cut off here i find them really useful i stamp words onto them sometimes if i'm doing a journal i might take a few of these and just take a few of them fold them over give them a little bit of a staple and then i've got tuck stuff for them i don't mind these and I do sometimes use these in collage as well because they're good bits of plain paper. But a lot of the time it's just for stamping words on and things like that. So that will go into my drawer of scrap pieces. So a couple of more things before we finished this or options um, before we finish this. And then I want to show you those sneaky, sneaky ideas that I thought we might look at as well. So, right. Corner punch. Now, I like to have the corners of my cover and my pages actually rounded so all I do is I cut them and then I work my way through the book I find I get better results if I cut it two at a time and it's le less labor intensive as well um, and I do that because if this isn't going into a cover say I'm just throwing this in the back of a backpack or something or say you've got it in your handbag or your man bag or in the car it's the corners that are going to get tatty so I tend to round them because there's less chance of them catching on things so let's just finish this side up i'll do the other one later when you're not around because you don't need to be see me curve punch all the different areas of this i sometimes have trouble with my my corner rounder it sometimes doesn't like me oh there you go i spoke too soon didn't i there you go i saved it on that one so okay what else can you use these for um these are great if you've got Things like you want to make shopping lists in them or the kids just need a notebook for school. I like them because they're not a huge piece of something in your bag. They tuck quite nicely into a glove box of a car. I like them. So let's just do the last bit. But as I said, I'm not going to do the whole other one. But as you can see, I round off the top. So I'm going to finish that one off afterwards when we're off screen. Let's clear some of this off. Right. Um other resources for this now as i said you could go out and buy some just inexpensive um, notebooks these were under a pound here in the uk so probably a dollar if less than a dollar in america um, and you can use these for pages all i do is i just open up the staples take them off then i've got lined paper and then i know i'm totally fine to go the only thing is this will have um the margin on them so if this was a four and a half one two three four your pages would end about here so you'd have a margin on your page um you wouldn't have a margin on all of them obviously because this side will be cut off your choice it's a it's an easy way to do it anyway um another thing i like to do is i mean i was out this morning and i bought this pack of notepads and this was £3.70 here in the UK, which is probably about $4 American, which means each of these pads was just a little bit over a pound or over a dollar. They're already beautiful covers. They're already lined on the inside. These don't have margins on them. And ironically, they're exactly the right height. And there was a reason why I wanted to choose one of these is because if I then take that and I cut it down, trim it down there i've actually made one of these and i don't want to say it's free but you know what there you go this this was a pound so i've made one of these and all i needed to do was just trim it down with a knife so let's take the purple one i've got there and show you what i mean just so that we're not confused in any way shape or form by kerry's random random instructions so right we know we need it to be eight and a quarter high so how much will I need to chop off? Let's go this way round. So let's just bring that up. Eight and a quarter. Let's grab a pencil. Eight and a quarter. Right. I'm going to bring my right angle in. 
Now, if they're not going into a Midori or Traveller's Notebook style cover, you don't need to worry about the height. You could have just left this be exactly as it was. Um, but I'm actually trying to make them so they would fit into a Midori or a Traveller's Notebook style cover. Let's just make sure I'm all the way through this. Yep, so that little bit's off there. Now, we know that it needs to be four and a half wide. Where am I up to? I'm trying to work it out so I can actually use. So if I do four and a half, just a little bit under four and a half because I'm taking into consideration the going around the corner thing. Now, if you do have things like this nameplate on the front, there's no reason why you couldn't just stick a new label on the front of this or maybe collage over the front. So just running my knife down. Remember, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just working till the knife goes down. Again, I'm making scraps of lined paper. Those are fabulous for making little notepads for journaling. Um, they just make tiny little books. You can just take these, fold them over, staple them. You've got little lined papers. Let's put that to one side. So now what I've got is, there you go. I've made another one. Why is that one bigger than that one? I measured something wrong. No, there you go. That's the same size as that one. I must have measured that one wrong. Um, so there you go. So I've made an inexpensive under a pound version. Now, if I was going to put this into one of these, which is obviously where it would fit perfectly, I have one slight concern about it. And that is that over time, maybe these staples would damage my my elastic so what I would do is I would actually just take those out and sew this one anyway just for peace of mind how am I doing for time actually I wonder right I've got an idea guys just because I've got you here and um, it gives me a chance to explain the other way of doing the sewing let me just take that out out of there so I'm just gonna get my clips back in and clip these will give me another chance to reinforce what I was saying about the the different version of the re um, the three hole pamphlet stitch let's just clamp those in place right. so I'm going to come in and lift up the, the staples I wouldn't recommend doing this with a craft knife guys or a Stanley knife like I'm doing Probably not the safest working practice out there, but you know what? It's what I've got to hand. Let's come in and take the staple out the outside. So yeah, the staples are fine, but they could over time, as I said, wear away your elastic, and then it's it's a lot cheaper to sew the sew the thread in than it actually is to replace the elastic. Also, don't forget you could just put a new cover on this entirely if that's what you wanted. So we're going to go back to this process. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to pop my holes in. So one in the middle. Now there's quite a bit more paper in this, so make sure you go all the way through. One at the bottom. Oh, there's a lot more than 20 pages in this one. I can tell you, I can feel it as I'm pushing this through. So there you go. Have I got holes on the outside? Yep. Yeah. Just make sure those are fully pushed through. I think I'm going to use black thread on this one just because I can. So again, one, two, three, four. Maybe this is another one I'll just throw in the car. Because goodness knows I've got these everywhere. Um, I also give these as gifts, by the way. If, if I've got someone I know that's a note taker or a list maker, I will very often, if I'm sending a happy mail out or something, or... Something along those lines, I'll include these as a gift. I think I sent some to Gail Augustinelli actually last year and she's using it for her high and hugs. So, so they are really, really useful. And I think probably because we know they're not that difficult to make and probably because we know they're not that expensive. I don't worry how I treat these things. So right, this time we're doing the reverse as what we did before. I go out through the middle. I come in through the base. Pull that down so I know that I've got, got it in place. I go all the way up to the top. I go out through the top. Now when I come back in through the middle, let's pull this through just a little bit, 
come back in through the middle, I need to pull this down so that I know I'm not going to cut through that thread when I come through here, because it's important. Any time you do stitching of any sort, you never want to go through your own thread. Now, as you can see, there's a central line. I want this thread to be on the opposite side. So we're opposite sides of that. And we're going to come over, tie that off. Let's cut this so I don't stab myself in the hand with it. Because I don't think anyone wants to see me bleed on state on, on screen. So I've given this a bit of a tug, tied it off, come through, tied it off again, and then just snip that. Undo the clips, and I've made myself a little notebook. Um, something I can use to travel, it's lightweight, it's just, I just find these incredibly handy. And, and I've made two of them and explained everything, and it's only 40 minutes. This here doesn't bother me. The way these are set up, guess what? Just put labels on them. Just put a strip of paper on them, just do anything. I mean, you've got a piece here, you can just stick a piece over there and make a brand new label. So it doesn't bother me. And that then would just slip straight within, where is it? Slip straight within here. And this is how you build them up. So there you go. There's one in there. There's two in there. Let's bring in the third, I think. Yeah, this is an empty one. Three in there. I mean, you can get them stitched. As you can see, I found this one that was already just stitched down the middle. So it's good to look when it's back to school time. Um, for notebooks, there you go. So, and that, that gives me my journaling options. And because if I'm traveling, I can change these out. One could be my planner. One could be like a watercolor book. One could be something for notes. One could be an address section, anything like that. So hopefully guys, you enjoyed that. Um, I do generally, generally use these a lot, as you've seen. They're really quick to do. That was another version of the pamphlet stitch, which hopefully you enjoyed learning as well. Um, both are equally as secure as the others. It's up to you entirely. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, um, where have I put my little thingy? Until next time, this is me saying goodbye. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.